At 18, I left my Midwestern hometown for college, vowing never to return. I felt that the racial and gender dynamics in my community stifled the possibilities that I saw for myself. So, in search of a bright future and a welcoming environment, I landed here in Washington, D.C. and started my career in government. I worked in the D.C. Mayor's Office in Human Resources and at a juvenile detention facility. It was exhilarating. Then, when my oldest daughter was born, I left my role as Director of Education and Workforce Development to move closer to family in St. Louis. From there, I worked at an international nonprofit, a Fortune 50 company, and a quasi-governmental organization. And in my view, as a diversity, equity, and inclusion leader with experience across multiple sectors, there is a single workplace dynamic that differentiates good organizations from great organizations. It's inclusive leadership. In my profession, we talk about intersectionality and the cross-section of race and gender issues. And while being a woman of color in the workplace has presented a unique set of challenges for me, I'm convinced that inclusive leaders are the bedrock of superior organizations and I wholeheartedly believe that we can design workplaces where women of color can thrive. When I've been surrounded by inclusive leaders, it has unlocked my potential. So the way that women of color are treated in the workplace matters because it impacts belonging and ultimately if they choose to stay at an organization. Inclusive leaders create workplace cultures where people feel seen, heard, and valued. More pointedly, inclusive leaders focus on championing, coaching, and supporting their people, which leads to people feeling included. Salesforce reports that employees who feel included are 4.6 times more likely to do their best work. So being people-focused always wins. When I worked in corporate America, I led partnerships for a new division that I joined. And as I built relationships, I partnered with an internal team that accelerated our time to market. Unbeknownst to me, a colleague on my new team was also working with the same group. And rather than see this as an opportunity to collaborate or identify synergies, he saw it as encroachment on his work and started disparaging me to anyone who would listen. He talked about me to his subordinates, to other coworkers, and even to our manager. And I had worked hard to build my reputation. So this smear campaign was challenging because a great place to work study found that black women face bigger hurdles for promotion. And a Harvard Journal of Experimental Social Psychology study found that black women are evaluated more harshly in year in performance reviews. So his comments could have derailed my career, but when he spoke to my manager, my manager showed up like an inclusive leadership champ. <laughs> he told my coworker that it was unprofessional to discuss me with his subordinates, and he encouraged him to make amends with me. My manager's intervention saved the day because it created space that allowed me to grow at the organization. But I've also worked for non-inclusive managers. They were demanding, demeaning, and dismissive. And in those workplaces, I experienced workplace bullying and sabotage. So it was hard to do my best work. I proactively left those teams, taking institutional knowledge, relationships, and promising ideas with me. It was a lose-lose, and my experience is not unique. Countless women of color have encountered difficult workplace cultures. So the key to revolutionizing your workplace is inclusive leadership because it unlocks human potential. Women of color will comprise 53.4% of the U.S. population in 2060, according to global think tank Catalyst. So you should start today 
to coach your teams on inclusive leadership. To get started, consider the fact that inclusive leaders are introspective. Inclusive leaders reflect on how people feel after interacting with them, and they admit when they got it wrong. Inclusive leaders also go out of their way to make people feel seen. I remember feeling overlooked at one organization where my coworkers routinely ignored me at work events. I felt small when I waved at them in the halls at work, and they just walked right past me and didn't acknowledge my presence. I felt invisible. Amanda Sesco and Monica Beardass research documented the invisibility of black women. When photos of black women were least likely to be recognized by their peers and black women's contributions at work were least likely to be attributed to them. It validated my workplace experience and that's why inclusive leadership is critical. Once I apparently disappointed my manager and he proceeded to yell at me for 45 minutes straight. I am not exaggerating. Needless to say, I left that experience feeling demoralized and it wasn't the last incident. Unfortunately, that manager wasn't introspective or cognizant of the impact his behavior had on me. Ultimately, the way he treated me was the impetus for me leaving that organization. Because when women of color feel overlooked or underestimated, they vote with their feet and you lose out on a valuable asset. <laughs> but it doesn't have to be this way. Inclusive leaders examine their organization for fairness and use data to validate their findings. Having systems that ensure equitable outcomes matters because it determines if women of color are treated fairly. For example, Inclusive leaders have systems to identify high potential talent and ensure that top performers aren't overlooked. At one organization, I had an extraordinary year when I launched a signature program and refined our operations. I received the highest performance rating possible that year. Yet, when it came time to discuss promotions, I kid you not, I was told that I would not be promoted because I was black. I wish that I had known then what I know now because I just accepted my manager's rationale that I would continue to have to work twice as hard because the optics of me getting promoted over my white colleague wouldn't look good. This failure of leadership on multiple levels caused me to miss a promotion that I had earned. And this never should have happened. What you measure matters. So inclusive leaders use data to inform their perspective and validate assumptions. This could include engagement surveys, pulse surveys, skip level meetings, or focus group to examine the organization for fairness and ensure equitable outcomes. Inclusive leaders also maintain an open mindset and see others as individuals. Gladys Garcia Lopez's research finds that Latina women often have to work twice as hard to overcome stereotypes about them. And sociologist Margaret Chen finds that Asian women are often victims of sexualized bias. These phenomena can leave women of color feeling overlooked at work. Once, I received a calendar invite for a meeting with the white male manager at work that I didn't know. I thought maybe he had a DEI concern and wanted to talk it through, so I accepted the meeting. The meeting starts and he immediately starts launching into acronyms that I have never heard in my life. I had no idea what he was talking about. So after about 10 minutes, I jumped in and said, hey, I just wanna make sure we're on the same page because I'm not really tracking. There's an awkward silence. He looks up slowly and says, I am so sorry. I thought you were someone else. Translation, he thought I was the other black woman that he knew. He overlooked the fact that the black woman he thought I was is five inches taller than me probably 10 years older and has a completely different hairstyle than me. He 
he wasn't seeing our individuality. So inclusive leaders checked their bias and proactively built relationships across the organization, valuing others as individuals. Inclusive leaders also tell the truth and are honest about the conditions in their workplace. This could include examining compensation across groups. The way that women of color are compensated matters because it communicates their value to the organization and impacts their financial security. The wage gap is a persistent issue for women of color. The US Government Accountability Office found that in 2021, white women earn 82 cents for every dollar a white man earned. Hispanic or Latina women earn 58 cents for every dollar a white man earned. And black women earned about 63 cents for every dollar a white man earned. And this imbalance comes at a cost. Researchers at the Federal Reserve Bank of San Francisco found that closing the racial and gender economic gap could have increased US GDP by $2.6 trillion in 2019, benefiting women of color and society at large. And sadly, the racial and gender wage gap has manifested itself in my own life. Once I applied for a promotion at work and I got the job. I was so excited because I had calculated my salary increase based on the posted salary range. So imagine my surprise to learn that while I was the successful candidate and deemed ready for the job, because of an internal policy, they would only offer me a fraction of the dollars that I should have earned. Adding insult to injury, I learned that they later brought in an outside male candidate for the same job at the higher salary rate. And it was so frustrating. Because can you imagine if this happened multiple times over my career? The National Women's Law Center found that in 18 states, the racial and gender wage gap cost black women $1 million over their lifetime. And the wage gap continues to widen. Inclusive leaders have the fortitude to be honest about the conditions in their workplace. And they do things like conduct pay parity analyses for fairness without inclusive leadership. You will lose talented workers and miss out on the innovation that diverse teams can bring. So mastering the pivot to embrace inclusive leadership can become your competitive advantage. If your organization isn't fostering equitable workplaces where women of color can thrive, you won't win the race for talent. So it's time to pivot. You can be a champion for inclusive leadership in your organization by P, being people focused, I, being introspective, V, validating your assessment of the organization with data, O, being open-minded, and T, telling the truth about the conditions in your workplace. Because here's what it boils down to. When there are inclusive environments, you enable someone like me, a working mom of four, to thrive. I'm now a doctoral student studying racial and gender inequities and having the space to pursue my passion enables me to add value to my organization with every new piece of information that I learn. So it's a cyclical ROI. When I'm surrounded by inclusive leaders, I don't have to be distracted by abrasive managers. I can show up and focus on innovating. In other words, inclusive leadership gives me the space to add value to my organization and help my team fulfill its mission. It's really simple, but so powerful. So ask yourself, are you on the path to revolutionizing your workplace with inclusive leadership? If not, bookmark this talk and follow the steps to pivot and set your organization on a path towards success. Thank you.